Amazon Bedrock, the new generative AI service developed by AWS has just been released and is now in general availability. Now, AWS leadership has been talking about AI and machine learning quite a bit, and they are very excited to tell you all about this service. And I figured now is a good time to just introduce you to this service, show you what's available, some of the things that you can do with it in the AWS console itself, and some of the APIs that you can hook into to start introducing generative AI into your applications, because that's where the money's at. That's what everyone is trying to do these days they all want ai in their applications so i'm going to show you how to do it as well okay so we are in the bedrock section of the aws console here you can just access it by typing in bedrock in the search mode you'll be brought to this screen so you can initially uh, what you need to do is go to the get started screen and if this is your first time using bedrock there's going to be a prompt that shows up here that asks you to activate the different models it's kind of like an opt-in mode where you need to say i need to i want to use these particular models so you need to actually request access to these models in order to get started with this or else nothing is going to be available you're not going to be be able to do anything and so that screen will bring you to this dialogue page under model access on the left hand side here and you can see these are all the different models that are available from AWS so they have a121 they have uh, the Amazon one that was developed they have anthropic which this one is a little bit special you have to kind of request access and give them a reasoning there's like a form you have to submit I didn't bother doing that uh, there's cohere and stability AI this one's for images and so if you want to request access to these you can see I already have access granted here it can take a little bit of a while uh, they say up to 72 hours but in my experience it only took around 10 minutes or so so what you need to do is go to this uh, edit button here click on this guy and you just need to basically ch uh, check all the boxes here and just enable all these and you can see here if you want to request anthropic you can do that uh, I don't know anything about anthropic I don't know why it's good but I mean maybe you do so you may want to do that Okay, so once you've done that, wait around for a little bit. You'll see access grant and pop up here that you can actually get started with playing with this thing. Okay, so what is going on on the left-hand side here? So we have getting started, foundational models, playgrounds, and deployments. And so if you go to uh, just the overview section, this was the homepage, you can see the different models that are available here. You can see the playgrounds support three different types. There's chat, there's text, and there's image generation. And the different playgrounds are using some of these different models. So like for chat for example i believe only a121 uh their model supports chat and the amazon one that i think that the new one that's coming out uh, will support that but it's not yet available and for image uh, i believe it's only the um stable diffusion or the the stable model that supports that so there's kind of like a selective um, restriction here based on which model you can use depending on what you're trying to do with it now if you want to learn more about these specific model types you can go into the provider section and this you can select the different uh, types here and kind of read all about them uh, there's the Jurassic 2 Ultra here what does this thing do it's now and that enables developers and businesses to build their own blah 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 uh, okay let's look at supported use cases open book question and answering great for cheating on tests uh, summarization also great for writing book reports draft generation information extraction ideation okay so this thing does quite a few things and you can kind of tinker with or look through some of these I guess we can learn about anthropic here since like what is this for okay this looks like it does quite a bit of things so probably uh, worthwhile to opt in if you are interested in learning more about it and the other thing to know about with bedrock in general is that it's a fully managed service so there's no infrastructure that you're hosting here you can use the on-demand mode which you basically pay on the token level how many tokens that get generated in your responses or you can pay for a provision throughput mode which is uh, you just basically pay by the hour and I gotta say that this thing uses probably the one of the most confusing pricing models out of any AWS service I have ever seen um, just because there's a lot of background knowledge you need to take in you need to know how like tokenization works and you need to know the difference between the different models and the pricing for each one that you want to use but it's fairly generous you can get away with like doing a bunch of experimentation without even paying anything maybe just a couple cents one other thing i wanted to tell you about is something that you should absolutely avoid if you don't know what you're doing with generative ai and language learning models which is trying to train your own models because this can cost you literally like hundreds of thousands of dollars if you come here and start messing with this uh, you know there's it's obviously not that easy to do it but you can mess with this um, so don't go here don't go to custom models and don't go to uh, fine tune a model so don't do any of this because this is going to require you to retrain things and it could potentially cost you a lot of money so stay away from this section of bedrock unless you absolutely know what you're doing or you want to read about how bedrock works and kind of know how all these settings play into how much you will be charged okay so let's get started with this um let's start with chat chat's pretty cool 
And so once you have all of the uh, models enabled on your account, so you get access granted, you can come here and you'll see the different base models that are available. So right now there's base models A121, um, there's Amazon, there's Fine Tune. These are the custom ones. So if you develop your own, then it will be here. Uh, and you see here, I have none created, so there's nothing here. Similarly, Amazon's one, uh, although it is here as an option, there's nothing available yet because I think it's under uh, active development. So the only one that works right now is A121 Lab. And if you come here, you can pick uh, Jurassic 2 Mid or Jurassic 2 Ultra. Jurassic 2 Ultra is the more, I believe, modern one that has more uh, parameters. So let's click on this. Um, so here you can add, this is for prompt engineering. If you want to come down here and add some instructions, tell it what it is, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also update the inference configuration. So if you want to change the temperature, um, the, the randomness, the length, so max completion, you can like crank this up. Wow, don't do that. You're going to probably be charged a lot if you accidentally make it talk too much. Uh, stop sequences. I don't know much about this stuff, but if you know a lot about AI, you probably do. So you can come here and play with this to get it uh, to be doing exactly what you want. All right, let's uh, try this out. So this is similar to what you would see with like ChatGPT, for example. So let's try to break this thing. Uh, so what is your name? Okay, unfortunately, enter does not submit this. Mine, oh, okay. Not a good start. Um, all right. Um, can dogs eat chocolate? Please give me something reasonable here. Okay. Whew, thank God. It's not going to make me poison my dog. Uh, okay. So this is the standard kind of chat thing that you'd see in like ChatGPT and all that using this model here. I don't know if this is because of the model itself or um, I don't know, maybe a bug in the API. I don't know what's going on here. Obviously, it's a little bit rough around the edges. Uh, let's try the image generation now. Image generation is kind of what you would see with stuff like Midjourney or Dolly or stuff like that. Uh, similarly, you can mess with all the settings here on the right. Now for this one, because Stability AI um, is the only provided um, model, that's all that's going to be available here. Um, so let's do some prompting here. Let's say, uh, what do we want to see here? A tech YouTuber. Let's see what we get. Come on, give me something, something good here. Not stereotypical, please. Okay, it's pretty, that honestly looks like like tech lead. This is trained on tech lead. Tech lead, you are a part of generative AI. Not sure if that's good or bad. Let's try something else. Um, how about a dog sitting on a porch? And my knowledge of using these types of image generation things is if you do shot with a specific camera type, so shot with Canon 5D, you say hyper realistic, you'll probably get something pretty good here. So let's try this out. Hopefully it's um, pretty good. Is this? Okay, this table doesn't even make sense. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty cute dog, right? Okay, so this is working pretty well. You can actually download this image if you want. You can also view the API request. This is helpful. I'll show you later because uh, you can just pop this into your code and just as is and start like calling this programmatically. And it gives you all the input settings here. So the prompt, so text, dog sitting on a porch, blah, 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 all the configuration parameters. So it's great to like come to the studio, play with this thing, get it to be what you want, download the API request, pop that in your code, then you're good to go. Uh, okay, so that is the image generation and let's go to text now. And this one, yeah, we want to delete it. Uh, what models do we got? So go here, let's try this one. We haven't tried this, so command. Okay, um, so this one you can do like back and forth chatting. You can also do like summarization of text. You can ask it to do more complex things. Um, so let's say that um, I am a college professor and I would like to create an outline for a class on AI. All right, uh, actually how about an outline, uh, an outline for a lecture, let's say a lecture on AI. Create a lecture format or create a, a lecture outline. Let's see how it does with this. Uh, let's see what it comes up with. Okay, introduction, introduce the topic of AI and its history. Okay, basics of AI, blah, 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 blah. Applications, okay, ethics. Okay, this is this is seeming pretty reasonable. Uh, the cool thing about this is that you can uh, add some more context after and it'll just kind of add on to its response. So you can say, uh, go into more detail on each topic, and each topic and this should give you a little bit of a more comprehensive breakdown 
And so, okay, so yeah, it's going into a little, little bit more clarity into each one of these areas, and that's that's great. Uh, so we'll just let this finish up really quick, and then I'll show you how to do this with code because it is kind of interesting to see how it all fits together. Uh, so let's go to view API requests now, and this was, I believe, just the initial, or is it gonna, is it gonna give me, uh, you know what? Let me just clean out what we had here. Um, bu -bu 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 I just want it to be the prompt itself. I'm a college professor and I want to create a lecture format. Okay, so this is what we want. So is this gonna be right here? Uh, yes, okay, so this is exactly what we want. So we're gonna copy this. It is now on our clipboard. Okay, so I'm gonna open up uh, VS Code here. And so I already pre-created some code that shows you how you can use this using Python. And this is with the most recent version of Boto 3. It just got updated to use the Bedrock runtime. So you can mess with this using Boto 3. Keep in mind, if you're using Lambda in the AWS console, it hasn't been updated to use the most recent version. So you're going to have to import the newest version of Boto 3 in order to get this to work. Um, so if you try to do that, you're just going to get like unknown service name found or something like that. Okay, so what's happening here? Importing Boto 3, importing JSON, we're creating a client, US East 1, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we do need to create a variable to store our requests. We're gonna say input is equal to paste, whatever we just got. So you can see what's inside here. It gives you the model ID, the content type. We want it back in JSON, accept everything, and then exactly what we put in the body. So including the prompt and including all the settings that were just default, so max tokens. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, stop sequences, all the stuff that was basically there on the right hand side. And so if you were developing your own application, like someone passes in some arguments, for example, you would just plop in whatever you want into the prompt field here inside the body of the input. And you can basically return back the response that AWS Bedrock generates for you. And then what you do here is we're gonna use the Bedrock Invoke Model API. And this thing uh, just, I'm basically copying over all the arguments. So body, model ID, uh, accept, input, or content type. I'm copying over everything from here because this comes as a dictionary. It needs to come in as name parameters. Uh, so we're doing that and then we're just calling, um, we're storing the result in response body. We're loading it in JSON format. We're reading off the body field and we're just calling the read method. And I'm going to print that out. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up the terminal now. So let's do that and run this bad boy. Okay, so yeah, clear. Let's just run this and see what we get. And if you're using just the invoke model API, this is done synchronously. So it's gonna wait for the whole thing to get generated. There's another one that lets you stream the, the response back. And there you go. You can see uh, we got the uh, text results. So inside the text field, inside generations, it looks like this is an array list. You get exactly what we saw in the, um, the front end there in the, the console itself. And so this is how you can use Amazon Bedrock. Like I said, now available, anyone can go and use this, just request access to the models and you're good to go. I'll also put this code in a gist or something so that you can grab this if you wanna play with it. Uh, do remember though that you need the most recent version of Bodo 3 if you're using Python. All the other SDKs are in the process of being updated if they are not already updated, but you're gonna to have to check them out uh, on a case by case basis. So that's all I got for this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much.